all these uh, solution for s for processing CSV files uh, was really nice, but uh, were really nice, but actually they don't always work. Let's look at this example. See, we have the same lines, but this la row in this row, as you can see, there is a field enclosed in double quotes that has a comma inside. By the way, if you don't know more, go and have CR2 of the seven dwarfs uh, in Hungarian. Actually. Anyway, so these are the, the fields and, and as you can see there is a comma here. So when you're using a regular split in order to, to, prov to, to cut it up, split doesn't really know about CSV, it just knows about uh, characters to, to, to cut the, the string. So it will cut here and then here and then here and this will become the, the space hapsi double code will become the third field so this won't work correctly if you if you can't assume that your csv file is such a um, nice one that we saw earlier then it's better to use a real csv processor luckily there are modules on cpan that can do that there is a, a module called text csv and there is one that's called textcsv underscore xs. Actually, they behave the same. Uh, the difference is that the textcsv is a pure Perl version, so it's probably a lot slower than this one. But this one, which is uh, written partially in C, partially in what's called xs, it's, uh, it's probably much faster than the other one, but it requires a C compiler to install, which is not a problem on on most of the system actually, so it's not a problem anymore on uh, Strawberry Pearl if you're using Windows, it's not even Active State, the modern versions of Active State can provide you with with um, a C compiler and definitely on Linux systems you're, you usually have it, so that shouldn't be a problem. Anyway, how do you how do we use this, this module? This module is um, basically an object-oriented module and we'll see we don't learn how to to write object-oriented code or how to you create classes and we don't go into the, all this. We just use a module that was written in an object-oriented fashion. So the, we have to install the module and we don't go into this uh, right now, that will be in a later chapter. But um, we use the module, so you type in use and the name of the module this will load the module into memory. We don't have to specify what functions to load because it doesn't have any functions, uh, not in, in, in the way we would use. And then before we can start using it, we create an object. So those who understand object-oriented, the name of the module itself is, is basically the class, so text CSV underscore access is the class. We uh, call the new method on it, so this arrow, this is the way how we call methods in Perl. So we call the new method, which is the constructor uh, of this uh, uh, class. It will return a scalar value, which is actually the object. And we'll use that object later. The rest of the code is quite similar than the, as it was previously, except of this part, right? This part is where we actually replace the split with this code that's using the CSV object. So how does this work? First of all, we call the parse method. These are called methods, not functions. So we call the parse method of this CSV object and provide it, provide the line, give the line to it to parse it. It will cut up the line everywhere where is there's a comma, but it won't return it. What it will return is success or failure, whether it managed to cut up the line or not. How would it fail? So, for example, if you look at the code, so it ex assumes, the, the, the module assumes that you have double quotes around fields. But what happens if you have just a single double quote? You don't have the closing one. That's a failure. Then, then the module doesn't know what to do with it. So it's an incorrect line in the CSV file. That would cause a, a failure in the parsing. So the parsing cuts up the, the string, and if it fails, then we get to the else part here. And it will we give a warning, um, printing out the actual line that, that failed, and and that's it. We don't know what else to do. Uh, in the other case, when this is successful, then the cut up part, the the line in 
cut in pieces is somewhere inside this uh, scalar object. We don't uh, exactly care where it is. What we know that if we call now the fields method on this CSV object, it will return the fields that were received by the parsing. So now we have two steps here. First we have to parse the line and then we have to fetch the actual fields with the actually parts of it with the fields method. Once we have the columns, then we can fetch again the column two second place, which is the third column, and add it to the sum. This one already will work with any uh, standard CSV file, even if it has embedded commas and if you have it co quotes. Now you could ask, how did it know that it should cut uh, using uh, the comma? Well, it's because the text CSV here, the, the module, can use any uh, string as, uh, as, the, uh, as the string to cut with, but by default it uses comma. The way you can look at it is that uh, Perl doc text CSV access. So we read the documentation and uh, I'll it, it has an example in the synopsis, but uh, we disregard it now. Um, here I got to, to the functions and the, there is the new function explaining what are the attributes and here you can see the attributes EOL, SEPCAR, SEPCAR is the one that is a separator character and by default it's the comma and the way you can uh, set them, here are a couple of uh, parameters, there a lot more than I would even think that CSV knows or can deal, needs to deal with so this is how you call it, here is the example. You would call a new without any parameters, you can put the parentheses around here, empty parentheses if you want, It's which, which equals to this call, where you have all the key value pairs, these are the defaults. So these are the default values of these keys, of these parameters. Now when if you want to change one of them, you don't have to provide all the rest, you just provide that pair that's different from what you are um, is different from the uh, from the default. So this way you can provide an es uh, and the escape character is, is the double quote and the separated character is the comma. That's why it cut uh, using comma. Uh, 